It's been about a week since Scorched Earth launched for ASA, and I want to talk a little bit about kind of what that meant for me, as well as what it seems to have meant for a lot of you, um, as well as, you know, with the Bob's Tall Tales and the general state of ASA right now. Um, you know, this is kind of a, a big criticism of the game, this video. Uh, and I also want you all to understand that, you know, I'm working on multiple huge undertakings, uh, one of which I'll be announcing very soon, to do with ASA and ARC. Uh, still, you know, I love the game, love the devs. Um, it's just that ASA has continued to drown in, in controversy, and I want to touch on that, you know, in this video. Uh, specifically with Scorched Earth, the kind of standard of quality we we want and we should maybe come to expect, as well as, um, you know, the expansion, the sort of Bob's Tall Tales and all that. So where do we begin? Well, Scorched Earth really needed a TLC. Um, I think that not only myself, but a lot of my tribe mates and, and a couple of the people that I've just seen in the community really wish there was more from Scorched. You know, they added, they obviously spent a lot of time, you know, redoing a lot of the landscapes and adding a lot of really fleshing out the environment and making it nice to look at, you know, pretty. And despite that, it's at the end of the day, gameplay wise, it is the same expansion it is the same map. There's what two new dinos, the Fasolosuchus and the Oasisaur. And one of them is behind a paywall, of course. Um, and I also definitely want to talk about that paywall because it is um, rather egregious. But, uh, you know, when it comes to just the base map itself, you know, it's kind of just a, a copy and paste with a lot of touch up in the landscape, right? And very little, you know, there's no tech cave. There's no, um, there's no extra bosses. It's just the manticore. It's still kind of the same. It has the same kind of lifespan as the Scorched Earth from ASE. And yet, you know, it took five months. So it, 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 begs to, it begs the question, like, okay, what was going on in this past five or six months um, that made Scorched Earth take so long? What, where was time being allocated? Uh, you know, NDAs, that's another thing I want to talk about. And so, you know, ultimately, there's, there's even more issues than that. I mean, for example, with the environmental continuity issue, where they changed a lot of the ruins in Scorched Earth to be generally a lot more simplified. It, to me, it looks like they have a bunch of a uh, updated assets. So they're a lot more kind of square and cube-like, as opposed to the more detailed assets that they had before. And it just, it makes, it's made me really wonder, like, what happened along the way that made it to where in some ways Scorched Earth is better in ASA than it was in ASE, but in other ways it's it's drowned out and kind of oversimplified and its history has almost been kind of tarnished a little bit, um, you know, especially with the presence of these these adventure packs. And first and foremost, like it, it's important to understand like these studios, game developers need money um, and that's not what I have an issue with. What I have an issue with is the fact that you buy this thing and you can then use these treasure maps that you can get insane loot in that you wouldn't otherwise. Uh, you can use the Oasis or however OP it may be. Um, you know, you can use the train, the train tracks, build uh, all that stuff, right? Uh, use shovels and anything else that they added, you know, I mean, there's a couple of cosmetics and sort of silly, goofy stuff, and that's fine. You know, I view that as fine, but like the major gameplay shifting stuff just rubs me really the wrong way. And I've seen, I know that, you know, a lot of people um, are also shouting about kind of, well, you know, ASC was just like this, Scorched Earth was paid, and there was stuff on Scorched Earth that you couldn't get on the island. But the difference was that you could still use it. Uh, you could still use Scorched Earth stuff on the island even if you didn't have the DLC because it was embedded in the game. But now <laughs> you try and use an item that's in an adventure pack and it says you need this DLC to, to use it, particularly with the treasure maps. I don't know to what degree it applies to other things. Uh, I know that I'm pretty sure it applies to like the reviving dinosaurs with the Oasis Oasisaur. So it just feels, if it wasn't pay to win, or if it wasn't so much a feeling of just being pay to win, it's also just a feeling of just yuckiness, I guess. Um, it's kind of the, <laughs> the only way I can really describe it. Like, you know, the, 
the creators of ARC used to have a, a really different standard when it came to what they were willing to put in their games. Um, this standard was, you know, oh, we're, we're never doing pay to win stuff. If we ever have uh, stuff that you can buy, it'll only be skins or expansion packs, right? Um, and by expansion packs, they were referring to extra maps at the time, right? And so there's obviously been this shift, this, this big change. And, you know, unfortunately, the reality is that we don't know where that shift or change is ultimately truly coming from. All we can do is guess. All we can do is speculate. Um, you know, there's so much evidence mounted against X or Y company uh, or X or Y CEO or leader. But at the end of the day, we don't know the full story. And part of why that's so enshrouded in mystery is because of the NDAs and this issue where, um, which Studio Wildcard and, and the associated companies involved have had major issues. And I know this is probably somewhat common in the games industry, um, but it, uh, you know, if you look at a, the, the team that made Baldur's Gate, for example, uh, I highly doubt, <laughs> and, and I would, even though I don't, know any of their devs, I really highly doubt that any of them uh, have the same kinds of NDAs that just completely stop them from being able to even express happiness or excitement about the stuff that they're working on, um, you know, or, or even just, just like feel like they're, I don't know, I can't speak for any of these employees that work on ARC or any of these people, but uh, there's a very clear problem with NDAs that have dehumanized both developers and the players at the same time um, because they're kind of part of the same coin and that entire coin has been basically just I don't know treated like crap treated like it doesn't matter like their voices don't matter like the players voices don't matter and like the developers voices don't matter and you know I'm not saying attack this uh, one company or another there's obviously just so much like we just don't know about why this is happening about like why uh, developers cannot speak up or or why there's such bad communication um and you know what's really worrying about this whole thing and part of the reason why I really wanted to make this video is you know what does the future of the arc ip really look like uh, not as like a uh, something you'd say at the end of an essay but Genuinely, what does it look like in, in, in six months, in a year, in two years, in three years, in four years? What does it look like? Because when ARC 2 releases, there is a document, and I'll pull it up on the screen now. Um, I think it's in the Q4 2023 um, like quarterly report filings from Snail Games. Um, in this report, uh, or whichever report it was, I'll, again, I'll have it up on, on the screen, it says that when ARC 2 releases, ASA is going to be terminated. Um, not the game itself, it's not like they're going to cancel the game, but funding being sent to SDE, which is the parent company of Studio Wildcard, is going to be cut off uh, completely. Um, what does this mean, right? I mean, let me know in the comments if you guys have any ideas or understanding of what it would mean if a parent of a parent company is cutting off entire funding to the child company beneath them. That doesn't look good, and it also begs the question, when does ARC 2 come out, right? Um, where is ARC 2? What is ARC 2 even <laughs> at this point? Because we've heard really nothing about it. We've, we've heard the news, the last news that we've had has indicated that ARC 2 isn't happening and that ASA is like the really the main thing, right? And that, that ASA is the future of the franchise. But if ASA is the future of the franchise as you know, has been indicated in last year's Extra Life, then why is the funding being cut off when ARC 2 releases? Um, is ARC 2 going to release in several years or is it going to release at the end of the year like it was said after the 15 quintillion delay? Um, I mean, there's been, there's been so many. Uh, what will be the fate of, of creators, right? Um, you know, for creators like myself, I certainly depend on... on popularity of ARC to a degree, but I've also been branching out a lot and trying a bunch of new games. And, um, you know, ultimately my, my fate doesn't really, you know, 
it shouldn't really matter that much to you guys. You know, you're here to consume content and to play games and stuff. Um, and that's exactly what I want to be creating for basically. But, um, you know, other creators like where, where, what will be the fate of creators who focus solely on arc? That's what I'm wondering about. And yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. I guess there's just a lot on my mind and I know that this is a topic that's uh, talked about all the time. It's just like, when you see a document that says <laughs> ASA's funding is just going to be cut off um, when ARC 2 comes out, like, how do you respond to that? I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's just kind of baffling. Um, on top of everything else, you know, the, the kind of the Bob's adventure, the Bob's tall tales that, that just kind of spit on the, like, yeah, I get it. They're, um, you know, they're trying to, I, I I can appreciate some of the content that they add. It's, you know, cause it, it's, it's fun. It's, it's silly. It's goofy. But the fact that they are truly pay to win is like, it just, I mean, it's essentially equivalent to what was, um, studio wildcard almost completely quit. Um, there were employees that were like threatening to leave. I think, um, leaders that were threatening to lead or to leave if, um, snail games didn't back off when they threatened to put a like a, a mech drill in the game that you had to that you had to fund or that you had to like fuel with with real money or something there's a tweet about it I have it in a report I made like a year ago I think um, but it's just like baffling that that was something that they almost quit over and now basically the equivalent of that has been put like kind of a light soft version of that has been put in the game uh, in Scorched Earth, and certainly in the future. If anything, that is set as standard for the future maps, as well as the future um, version or the future updates to Bob's Tall Tales. More pay-to-win stuff. Um, maybe they even will add that that drill, that mech modification that you have to pay for. Um, it's just kind of ridiculous. And and when you combine that with the fact that the maps themselves are not seeming to add a whole lot new to really flesh them out and to address criticisms that players had, you know, beyond, you know, Scorched Earth got its ending, it got its ascension, but it's still so lackluster compared to Aberration, for example, or The Island. And so it feels like it's kind of just, it was promised to get some love and then it didn't. And so what does that mean for the rest of the maps, right? Um, and... Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys, uh, just what you think about all of this and and the funding getting, getting cut off and the, the lack of communication, which then moves to better communication, but then cuts off all, all, you know, all of a sudden, like it's very sporadic. Um, yeah, just let me know in the comments what you think. And otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye, everyone.